on July 28, 2015, the defendant, Joyce Mitchell, executed a waiver of indictment and consent form whereby she agreed to waive presentment of a case to a grand jury and enter pleas of guilty to a two-count superior court information, uh, which had been filed by the district attorney's office. The two count superior court information charged her with a class D felony of promoting prison contraband in the first degree and the class A misdemeanor of criminal facilitation in the fourth degree. An agreed upon disposition subject to the court's approval was placed on the record and the defendant entered pleas of guilty to both counts. The court ordered the preparation of a pre-sentence investigation report to be prepared by the Clinton County Probation Department and set sentencing for today. The court has received and reviewed the report and has made it available to the attorneys as well as all correspondence the court has received. Joyce Mitchell appears today for sentencing with her attorney, Stephen Johnston. The people are represented by District Attorney Andrew Wild. We will now proceed with sentencing. District Attorney Wiley, you may address the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, I have a number of um, issues that I would like to discuss before you impose sentencing today on Joyce Mitchell. Uh, first and foremost is I appreciate uh, previously receiving a copy of the pre-sentence investigation report. Um, I would um, acknowledge that um, I have reviewed that report and I believe that it's a very thorough uh, report into the history of, of Joyce Mitchell as well as into the um, the aspects of um, her involvement with Richard Matt and David Sweat, uh, which resulted in their escape from the Clinton facility on June 6, 2015. Um, a couple of the issues, Your Honor, that I would like to address are as follows. Um, the main issue um, of concern was the issue filed by the New York State IG's office, a request for restitution for the state of New York. And that restitution um, amount that was requested by the Inspector General on behalf of the governor, on behalf of the state of New York, was in the amount of $119,762. Um, and that is basically broken up into two um, aspects. The, the first is a total of $79,841. And that is the actual physical cost for um, repair and replacement of uh, the two cell uh, blocks, uh, cell 22 and 23 of A block at Clinton Correctional Facility that David Sweat and Richard Matt were housed in um, on or about uh, June 6, 2015. And the second amount is of $39,921. And that is a, um, a fee that the state has had to pay to the um, company that performed the, the work um, per state contract, and that is a design and construction fee um, of that amount. I had a conversation with um, Inspector General Captain Lady Scott this morning. She advised me that um, that specific um, design and construction fee is a cost that is normally required, it all, in fact, always required for state, state bid jobs, and that the state had to pay that amount. Uh, to uh, proceed with the uh, repair and, and uh, construction of the, um, of the cell walls and the steam pipe um, that uh, sweat and mat cut to escape from the facility. It's my understanding that the court is going to address that issue of restitution um, at a later time this morning in the uh, sentencing proceedings, and um, we just reserve our rights to a restitution hearing uh, if the court deems that appropriate. Thank you. Um, relative to um, the other terms and conditions of the um, sentence, Your Honor, one was that George Mitchell was required to fully cooperate with the Inspector General's Office, the New York State Police, and the Clinton County District Attorney's Office from the date of her um, plea being entered into back in July 28 to today's date. I've also confirmed with the Inspector General this morning that they have concluded their interviews of Joyce Mitchell and they are satisfied to the extent um, of her cooperation with them and will no longer be seeking any further or additional interviews of Joyce Mitchell um, relative to, uh, to this matter which was before the court for sentencing on. Um, 
Next, Your Honor, is I have received a letter last week which I provided to the court and I provided to Mr. Johnson. It is a letter from um, Thomas Tur uh, Tarcia. Um, Mr. Tarcia is the, uh, the brother um, of the victim of, um, of David Sweat's homicide for which he was convicted of. And um, I just want to acknowledge that the court has received that letter and reviewed that letter prior to sentencing. I have. Right. Um, and so I don't feel there's a need for me to go in and, and read the letter if you've already received it. I have. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, next was a issue that um, Ms. Mitchell was required as part of her plea negotiations to execute a document with the New York State Department of Education. It was a surrender agreement relative to her um, a license uh, that she holds, uh, or certificate that she holds with the New York State Education Department. Uh, she did execute that document. Um, I have resubmitted that document to the New York State um, Education Department, and I received last week a um, four copy of the original agreement from Mr. Fennessy, who is the senior attorney for the um, State Education Department. I provided the court with a copy, and I provided Mr. Johnson with a copy, so um, that issue has been satisfied by Ms. Mitchell. Um, Your Honor, that concludes my um, issues that I wanted to address. Um, as the court is aware, uh, Ms. Mitchell did plead to the two charges for which she was charged with. Uh, the negotiated sentences on those are a two and a third to seven year um, indeterminate sentence on the charge of promoting certain contraband in the first degree with a $5,000 fine. That is the maximum period of incarceration and the maximum fine that Ms. Mitchell could be sentenced to for that charge. The second charge is criminal facilitation in the fourth degree. Um, the court, uh, my understanding, was sentenced Ms. Mitchell to a one-year jail sentence concurrent and a thousand-dollar fine, which is the maximum sentence she could receive um, on that fine. The mandatory surcharges and fees. Um, Ms. Mitchell waived her rights to trial, appeal, and post-conviction remedies in the matter. Um, she has, as I indicated earlier, fully, uh, fully cooperated and. My understanding the court will issue a um, DNA sample or an order for a DNA sample in the DNA um, data bank fee of $50. Um, this concludes my statements, Your Honor. I would just ask the court to sentence uh, Ms. Mitchell accordingly, and I thank you for your attention on uh, this matter. Thank you. Mr. Johnston, you may address the court. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Um, on July 28th, um, Joyce Mitchell appeared before you and entered a plea of guilty to the two charges that you mentioned. One was a felony, one is a misdemeanor. And uh, pursuant to the terms of the plea bargain agreement that was put on the record at that time, uh, Ms. Mitchell was to um, execute a waiver of appeal. I believe that that has been done. She was to um, execute a surrender agreement. She did that at that time, and I have a copy of same provided by Mr. Wiley. I guess it's been fully signed uh, by someone with the uh, state of New York. Um, in addition, I'm advised that the actual certificate was forwarded by Lyle Mitchell, uh, Joyce's husband, to uh, Albany uh, in the way of surrender. Um, I don't have any documentary proof of that because he took care of that on his own, on her behalf, but he advises that that was forwarded, uh, actually the day after the plea. Um, she was to cooperate with the Inspector General's office. Um, I believe she's fully complied with that, as Mr. Wiley said. She um, gave approximately 10 hours of interviews over two separate sessions, and through me provided various pieces of information that office was requesting. Um, she clearly cooperated in preparing in the preparation of the pre-sentence report, uh, as there is a fairly lengthy interview, um, the term, the substance of which is set forth in the report. Um, so I um, believe that she has complied with um, what she promised and agreed to do um, at the time of the plea on July 28th. 
Um, and I'm here also requesting that the court impose the sentence agreed upon by the people and the defendant on that day. Uh, with respect to the issue of restitution, this is something that came up for the first time after July 28th. Uh, came up around September 8th and 9th, um, so a couple, three weeks ago. Um, we object to restitution. However, Mr. Wiley has provided case law, which seems to indicate the court has the power to address and make a determination on that issue. And it's my understanding the court is going to deal more fully with that issue at a later hearing, at a later date. Um, I just want to make it clear that we object because it was not part of the original plea bargain, number one. Number two, if the court is going to entertain restitution under um, the penal law section, 60.27, uh, it's capped at $15,000, absent certain circumstances, and I believe that those circumstances are not uh, uh, present in this case. But I would like the opportunity to speak more specifically about that uh, down the line, because you've already indicated what you intend to do with this. Um, I, I would like to also say this on behalf of, of Joyce. She um, spent approximately 40 hours being interviewed by the police, documented in the report before you. She spent approximately 10 hours being interviewed by the IG's office. Um, no question that at first when she was talked, uh, interviewed by the police, she was not truthful. After the first day or so, she, she was, and she provided uh, information to them and did her best in the ensuing days uh, to provide information to, um, um, so that the police would be better able to apprehend Matt and Sweat. Um, so I believe she has cooperated. I know from my contact with her over the course of these several months that she is very remorseful for what she did. She uh, feels horrible for what she did, can't undo what she did, I understand that. Um, and she understands that, but uh, she is very remorseful for what she did. Um, last, um, there are, um, the, the thing that I'm not clear about even today is that there's no question she uh, introduced hacksaw blades and a chisel or chisels and, and a couple of other items into the facility. It, it just, I just do not understand how these men could have escaped without the use of power tools, which had nothing to do with Joyce. And, and I, I don't understand that, and I, I've never gotten an answer to, to that. It doesn't change her responsibility for what she did or, or her involvement, I understand, but I, I just don't want that overlooked, that I believe that there was some other assistance, some way, somehow, provided to these men, separate and apart from whatever assistance uh, Joyce provided. And lastly, I also agree with Mr. Wiley that the report is very thorough. The people that re prepared it did a, 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 thir you know, a thorough and good job. Uh, one small error, though, I just wanted to point out, uh, it indicates in the report that Loyal, Lyle and Joyce Mitchell were married in 95. Actually, it was 2001. It's just a minor mistake. So that's what I have to say on Joyce's behalf, Your Honor. I believe she would like to address the court. Thank you. But before Ms. Mitchell speaks, can we just address one issue relative to the restitution that's being sought by the state of New York? As the court is aware, um, Ms. Um, when the plea was entered into on July 28, 2015, there was no specific reference to um, restitution being sought by the state of New York. Now that restitution is being sought by the state of New York, Ms. Mitchell has to be advised of her rights. And I know that Mr. Johnson has done this outside of the court record, but I think the court record needs to be clear on it, and I think there needs to be an inquiry by the court of Ms. Mitchell. I'm sure you were probably going to do that. I just want to make sure the record is, is straight that she is uh, subject to a restitution hearing if you order that, that she is aware now that the state is seeking restitution, that the court is going to order restitution based upon the <coughs> excuse me, the restitution hearing, and that if she continues to object to that, that the, um, uh, she has the right to withdraw her plea. 
and that um, she is going forward today with that understanding and that knowledge and that she is not in fact waiving um, her waiving her I'm sorry withdrawing her plea in um, at requesting the court to uh, basically uh, re-enter a not guilty plea for her thank you just respond I certainly have no objection if you want to advise Mitch Smith Ms. Mitchell of that. Um, I have advised her of what Mr. Wiley just related on the record. She has told me she wants, does not want to withdraw her plea, wants to go forth, forward. Um, so that, I have talked to her on two separate occasions and that's the answer I got. But certainly if the court uh, needs to advise her that that is certainly acceptable. Um, um, we, we are objecting um, to restitution but but even more specifically to the the amount that's being sought and we would request a hearing on that issue thank you before I turn to Miss Mitchell uh, I will address this point uh, I will set a date for a restitution hearing uh, in the interim both attorneys may submit briefs on this matter thank as you. to the authority of the court to impose restitution and um, the amount of restitution that should be uh, awarded if the court uh, determines to uh, set any restitution. That's a matter uh, for the court uh, to determine on the day of the restitution hearing, but as to the authority to proceed, um, the attorneys may submit briefs on this matter. Thank you, sir. Now, Ms. Mitchell, you now have the opportunity to speak. Is there anything you wish to say to me uh, and to the community and the general public? Yes, you do, Your Honor. You may proceed. Okay. I wrote it down because I know that I would forget half of what I wanted to say. Please allow me to start by saying how sorry I am. <laughs> how much remorse I have for everything that oh, I'm sorry. that has happened with my part in that and sweats. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. When that and sweats is hate, if I could take it all back, I would. I can't begin to explain how sorry I am for all this to the community, to my coworkers, to my family, to all the families of the officers that were involved in having to be taken away from their families in this search. While these two men were on the loose. I never intended for any of this to happen. As hard as it was to come forward, I knew I had to. I was raised to tell the truth. I know I didn't come out at first and be completely honest, but I did bring myself to the state police and try to help as much as I could. I'm afraid it didn't help though, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I am 51 years old, and this is by far the worst mistake I have ever made in my life. I live with regret every day and will for the rest of my life. I'm sorry. I've never been so disappointed in, in myself. And not I not only let myself down, but my family. My husband and my children are my life, my world. I hate this. I was fearful of Mr. Matt threatening to kill my husband and wanting to know where my son and my mother lived. I could not let anything happen to my husband and family. I love them all so much. 
I love them more than life itself, Your Honor. I cannot... I am not a bad person. I clearly made a horrible mistake. I realize I need to be responsible for my actions. But I am hoping you will have mercy on me. Your Honor, no words can explain how deeply sorry I am. I am very fearful of the consequences I am facing, as should I be. Please know I am seeking mental health and counseling to help me understand my actions, how my actions affected the community, my family, myself, and all who were involved. Why I did what I did, I shall not know other than I was scared for my husband and family's lives. I know I should have told someone, but Mr. Matt had others watching and reporting to him about where and what myself and my husband were doing at all times. This is something I will never forget nor forgive myself for. Please understand I acknowledge my actions and I am still trying to understand why I made the choices I did. I hope one day everyone involved can find it within themselves to forgive me. If not, I understand. But most importantly, I want to make it home to my family. As I fear I won't because of my actions. I'm hoping you understand how remorseful and sorry I am. None of this was ever my intentions. Your Honor, thank you for your time and consideration. Your Honor, I would wear an ankle bracelet and county jail for the rest of my life if I get this goal to my family. And to be perfectly clear, Ms. Mitchell, and you're still under oath from the date of the plea, you do reaffirm your pleas of guilty to these two charges. Is that yes. correct? Yes, thank you. As I have previously stated, the proposed disposition, as with any negotiated plea and sentence, is subject to the court's approval. More than one letter writer has asked that I reject the negotiated sentence. There be, may be others who uh, have been following this matter, who feel the same way. Therefore, before I sentence the defendant, my first remarks are addressed primarily to the general public. Since I feel there may be misconceptions by many uh, in the general public as to how the legal process works in general and how it worked in this particular case, I wish to address this matter. First, the defendant Joyce Mitchell, under the proposed disposition, would receive the maximum sentence. The maximum sentence for the felony of promoting prison contraband in the first degree is an indeterminate sentence having a minimum of two and one-third years and a maximum of seven years. This charge relates to the admitted occurrence by the, def by the defendant that on one occasion she smuggled into Clinton Correctional Facility dangerous contraband. Therefore, to state the obvious, the court has no authority to impose more than the maximum sentence as set forth in the law. Uh, this being the case, it may be that members of the public might suggest I nevertheless reject the terms of the disposition in the hopes that additional charges would be brought. Uh, letter writers seem to believe that uh, if additional charges were brought, um, an additional sentence uh, could be eventually uh, imposed if there were a conviction. The problem with 
uh, this thought is that it confuses the separate roles of the courts and the prosecutor. The court cannot and should not evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of a possible case to be filed against a defendant. It simply doesn't have the information to make such an assessment. And even if it did, it would be improper to do so. Uh, since, uh, as stated, this is not the role of the court. Uh, the role to determine what charges should be presented uh, falls to the prosecutor, who I am sure, uh, uh, in this case, as in other cases, makes the decision after a thorough uh, consultation with law enforcement officials and an evaluation of the likelihood of success if charges are pursued. Therefore, in summary, the court will not um, uh, will not reject the negotiated uh, disposition. Since, as stated, uh, it believes uh, that the maximum sentence of two and one-third to seven years is appropriate. Now, turning to the defendant, Joyce Mitchell. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, after reading the pre-sentence report, um, I have the following comments. Yes, it is true that uh, this is your first contact with the law in your entire life. In many cases, in most cases, defendants have some prior criminal history. Admittedly, you do not. Uh, the report, uh, which I agree is very thorough, uh, sets forth that after dropping out of high school, you proceeded to get your GED and went on to obtain a two-year college education. You have had steady employment throughout your life. Furthermore, your family stands by you and supports you, and this speaks positively of your relationship with them. On the other hand, you did terrible things. As far as the economic damage your actions caused, the Inspector General, Catherine Leahy Scott, indicates that to date, New York State uh, has incurred almost $23 million in overtime costs alone related to the manhunt. Considering all the other costs associated with the uh, escape and the investigation, there can be no doubt that millions of dollars more have been expended. But staggering as the economic cost to New York State may be, the economic and non-economic cost suffered by so many people is incalculable. A large portion of the local population were terrorized. Many were forced to flee their homes. Some did not have places to go and had to rent hotel rooms or leave the area. Many residents did not sleep for uh, many nights, afraid that these two extremely violent individuals might be outside their homes. Roadblocks and limited access to certain areas caused businesses to shut down or limit their hours, uh, causing uh, economic pain to many. And then, we have the law enforcement officers who came here not just from all over New York State but from all over the country. They traversed very inhospitable territory never knowing if the next step they took in deeply wooded areas might be their last. And think of their families at home sick with concern and fright for their loved ones. At any time, you could have stopped the escape from happening. 
you state that you proceeded in the way you did out of fear for what might happen to your husband. And you further state that you, quote, did the wrong thing for the right reason to save my husband's life and my family, end quote. Similarly, at another point in your pre-sentence interview with the Department of Probation, you said, quote, I am trying to save, I, w I was trying to save my husband, end quote. Ms. Mitchell, I just don't find that explanation credible. Your husband's life would not have been more endangered by exposing the plot to escape. While you express remorse for the harm you caused the community, you also stated that you believe the negotiated sentence is too harsh. Taking into consideration all the various sentencing factors, I can assure you, you have nothing to complain about with the negotiated sentence. For the reasons stated, I will approve these sentences and proceed as follows. As a result, from, from your conviction for promoting prison contraband in the first degree, you are sentenced to an indeterminate period of incarceration of two and one-third years to seven years. You are also fined the maximum fine of $5,000. As a result of your conviction for criminal facilitation in the fourth degree, I sentence you to a definite term of one year concurrent to the just imposed sentence for promoting prison contraband in the first degree. And I fine you a fine of $1,000. Impose the mandatory court surcharge, crime victim fee, and DNA fees totaling $375. I next uh, note that the defendant has surrendered her uh, teaching certificate uh, to the New York State Education Department. Uh, as previously stated, regarding the restitution sought by the people, uh, the, the people seek restitution in the amount of $119,762 for construction and repair work in the uh, part of Clinton Correctional Facility in the area uh, behind the cells that were breached. Defense counsel has requested a restitution hearing to which the defendant is entitled and the court will set this hearing for November 6, 2014 uh, at uh, 10 a.m. Is there anything further? A moment, sir. Judge, that date is fine. Uh, the only thing I would uh, request, and I don't know if the court has the power to do this, that if Joyce Mitchell was local, during that intervening time between now and November 6th, it would help the defense prepare for the hearing. So I would make that request if the court has the ability to do that. Um, I on that. Uh, well, I, I don't see what purpose Joyce Mitchell would have in, in helping uh, in helping Mr. Johnson with the monetary amount that the state is requesting. She had, uh, she had everything to do with it, but she has nothing to do with the amount. She can't help Mr. Johnson uh, calculate uh, figures or, or go through that. Uh, on the date of a sentence where a defendant is sentenced to a period of incarceration in the New York State Department of Corrections, uh, the defendant is turned over to the Department of Correction Thank you. Uh, at the close of sentencing. And, uh, and that leads me to my final direction. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, I am remanding you to the care and custody of the New York State Department of Corrections to serve the sentence imposed. Uh, please uh, 
before you leave, complete the um, required form relative to the uh, giving of a sample of your DNA. I think we already did this. We already signed one of these before. That was the waiver, not the intention. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Okay. This talks about the DNA feed and the DNA. You have to provide a sample. The probation will come in with that. Are you able to sign it? The record should reflect that the defendant has signed the DNA form and requested form relative to appeal. And at this time, uh, this concludes the matter. Ms. Mitchell, I'm going to remand you to the custody of the Department of Corrections. Thank you. 